Hey what's up guys, OSJ here with another video and today we will be looking at 20C64 games where the publishers really pulled our pants down and gave us a good spanking. Back in the day a full price game ranged from around $8.95 for tape to a staggering $17.99 on disc. That's around £35 for a tape and £70 for a disc in today's money which actually outprices many of today's AAA game prices, well for disc anyway. The games I picked today aren't the worst price games as a whole as there were full price games that were even worse than these, like for example 9-11 Tiger Shark. But the difference is with the games in this video that unlike the unknown full price games, these were all games that we either played in the arcade or watched the movie they were based on so we had to have them. And for me that's what makes these games the worst Commodore 64 full price games ever made. Before all that though, it's time for some promotion. Me and the other Paul, Retrobate, are starting a channel up where we're going to do live streams. Oh, why am I telling you this? Let my mate Patrick tell you the details. Hello and welcome along one and all to a new channel and a new stream from your favourite two Pauls from Sunderland called Retro Librium. Each episode, OSG and Retrobate will be focusing on 8 and 16 bit micros with a different special guest, a quiz live gameplay challenges, new indie game development, and of course, I shall be reopening the consultation zone for all you pesky cheaters. Coming soon to our new YouTube and Twitch channel, the link in the description. Rediscovering the past, shaping the future, welcome to Retro Librium. Looks good eh? Get on over to the channel, the link is in the description and at the end of this video. Subscribe to us and click the bell, you won't be inundated with crap as we will only be streaming about one or two times a month. Ok, enough promo work, let's take a look at the 20 worst full price Commodore 64 games ever made. Kicking us off in 20th place we have Mask 2. Ok so maybe this was partly our fault as the first game wasn't the best either but if you like me love Mask then the Mask games were a must have. Imagine playing with your Mask Boulder Hill playset and then going one step further and actually being part of Mask. Well as I said the publishers knew that and although this game has a kick ass soundtrack from the late great Ben Daglish and the graphics weren't too bad either to be honest the game itself was utter crap, virtually unplayable but unlike today's four way culture Back in the day, if you bought it, you had to play it. Nineteenth place is taken by Red Heat. Arnie games were like printing money for publishers, and this one has to be the worst out of a lot of them. It all starts off a bit okay with massive sprites from a waist up, and it actually looked like Ivan Danko in the sauna scene. Unfortunately, the looks were as good as it got. The gameplay was a total bore fest as you punch and headbutt your way through every level. The only respite from this monotonous fighting was a bonus screen where you had to smash the rock, but afterwards it's straight back to the boring action. Ocean made some great games but they also know how to capitalise on the crap ones too. HKM Human Killing Machine is in 18th position. This game was marketed to fool us. One year earlier we got the shit show known as Street Fighter on the home computers and yeah it was dire. But wait there's a new one on one fighter on the scene and it promised to be good. Just look at the box art. What 12 year old kid wouldn't like that? And it's by US Gold. Gold is shiny and good. But as we came to find out US Gold was also often the mark of a that'll do attitude and with HKM that's what we got. I'm not going to lie and say the graphics are good because they aren't but they are better than Street Fighter. But and it's a big but the gameplay is amongst the worst if not the worst one on one fighter I've ever played. In 17th place we have Vigilante. Considered as a spiritual sequel to Irem's earlier Kung Fu Master, this game was a firm favourite in the arcades. And because of that, US Gold, yes, them again, gave themselves the licence to print money. All we have to do is get the box art right and then take screenshots from the arcade and put them on the back. Kids are stupid, they won't know the difference. Well, yes US Gold, we did see the difference. I mean who could mistake this for the arcade? Lies aside, the game itself is piss poor. So slow that you literally look like you're moonwalking along. It's a nightmare. <laughs> 
16 place is taken by Street Fighter 2, the most expensive game on this list, but it's also the newest being released in 1992. You know, some games were never going to work and Street Fighter 2 is definitely one of those games. What we got was a pixelated mess. The sprites, although you can tell who they are, are so rough around the edges and they just blend into the mess of the background. Then there's the gameplay. Simply pressing along and fire pulls off special moves and there seems to be no skill involved in playing this game at all. And yes, you've guessed it, it's US Gold, following their same old recipe for making money from unsuspecting kids. Karnov is in 15th place. Love it or hate that Data East's Karnov was one of the most popular arcades of its time. It's also rock hard and just a platformer. Surely we can have that ported to the C64. After all, by this time we had had some great platform games on the system, but no. What we got was like a Spectrum hybrid. Not quite see-through, but crappy coloured backgrounds. Super slow gameplay and no in-game music. Why on earth did the Sid not knock out that catchy soundtrack? Okay, surely the sound effects must be good. Um, no, they're as bad as the rest of the game. What a shame, I love this game so much on the arcade. In 14th place we have Chase HQ. If there's one game on this list that makes us C64 users look like losers, then this is it. Amstrad and Specky owners proper ripped the piss out of us, all the time, and I was one of the unlucky kids who bought this game using my hard earned paper round money. Two weeks pay for this pile of crap. The game just looks so wrong, plays nothing like the arcade, and it's so slow and boring. No in game music on a racing game is unforgivable too. Amstrad and Specky owners know we just can't retaliate on this one. Thirteen place is taken by Double Dragon. Okay, so for me this is the worst of a lot, as it was the biggest kick in the teeth I ever got from buying a C64 game. The arcade game is my favourite arcade game of all time. I have so many memories tied up in that game, so when I went to buy it from town, I was all excited on the bus, all the way back looking at the beautiful big box. Sure the graphics weren't spot on, but surely the gameplay would be like my beloved arcade. Um, no, it was not. The gameplay is so clanky you have to run in, kick and then run out and repeat again. No big guys either. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Shame on you Melbourne House. Guerrilla War is in 12th place. Another coin up classic but actually one that I never really liked. It never quite lived up to the likes of Akari Warriors. That being said, it was still massive and was a big thing when it was released on the home systems. However, what we got was a complete load of tripe. Gameplay wise, well, what gameplay there was, was slow and you always ended up getting stuck in the horrendous looking backgrounds. It's only one saving grace was the music, but that don't merit the high price tag for this crap. In 11th place we have Street Fighter. As far as fighting games go, the Street Fighter games are the best known of the lot, and although Street Fighter Arcade hasn't aged well, back in the day it was the dog's bollocks. We hadn't seen anything like it, and when it was part of the home systems, most of us would have gone out and bought it. I know I did, and I remember the what the f moment of when it loaded up. I mean, come on, the game is ugly as sin and the gameplay is virtually non-existent. Tenth place is taken by Wet Le Mans. Who could forget one of the weirdest arcade cabinet designs ever, with a Le Mans car that was more like a waltzer cart than a car. Nevertheless, it was really popular in the arcade. And on the home systems, I have to say that the screenshots look really promising, but screenshots weren't to be trusted, because this game is atrocious. Let's start with the road and background. Now I know that we got a lot of stick about dull colours on the C64, but this game takes a piss, with different shades of grey, and then the gameplay is flawed, as the roads are far too narrow to actually 
past cars or get round corners while being stopped. This game is woeful. Afterburner is in 9th position, probably the best arcade cabinet ever made with the gyro, and the game was like being in the cockpit of a jet fighter. The queues for this machine were always massive. The C64 version for Mac Division was an abomination, boring repetitive crap. You just felt like you weren't actually doing anything at all in the game. The US version was much better than what we got in the UK, but was nowhere near good enough to be full price. I said it before, and I'll say it again, Activision bastards. In 8th place we have G-Lock R360. Now I'm older and wiser I realise that some games just should never have been attempted to be ported to the C64, and G-Lock was definitely one of those games. It's another flying game, but whilst Afterburner felt like an arcade flying game, G-Lock was much more of a flight simulator, fast frantic action, which was the total opposite of what we got on the C64, and this was the second highest priced game on the list. We bought it, and hated it, and ourselves for being so gullible. Seventh place is taken by Big Trouble in Little China. As far as movies go, it doesn't get much more nostalgic as Big Trouble in Little China, so it was only natural that the game was made. But come on, I mean, what the hell is this? I have played a lot of games where they are so far off the mark, but this one has to be right up there, with the ones that in no way do they resemble the movie they are based on. Big Trouble in Little China was a great movie, but one of the worst games ever made under movie license. I say one of, because we are going to see more in this video. Crazy Cars is in 6th position. If there was one genre that got us rushing out to buy games, it was car racing. And Crazy Cars had some great marketing, making us unsuspecting kids fall for the flashy box art. And in true command style, they had screenshots from the Amiga, ST and IBM PC on the back of the box. I mean, they weren't great versions either, but graphics wise, they were okay. Anyway, the only thing crazy about this game is that people paid 10 to 15 quid for it. In 5th place we have Knight Rider. If there was one TV show that I watched religiously, then it was Knight Rider. I really wanted the kick car that did the turbo boost, and even now I wish I had hair like the Hoth. The game, however, falls into the same category as every Knight Rider game ever made, and that's a category called Horseshit. It loosely resembles the show, but nothing in this game is entertaining at all, and you don't really have to steer the car on the road. It's all a bit like, let's make a game and take the kids as cash, bunch of crooks. Fifth place is taken by Line of Fire. Now Line of Fire on the arcade, for me, was a complete gem of a game. I loved Op Wolf and Thunderbolt, but Sega took this genre to a new heights with Line of Fire. The C64 version, however, apart from vaguely looking like the arcade, well, looking like, as in moving forward whilst enemies tried to shoot you, was a total ball fest. It's like half the enemies have gone on a union strike over minimum wages, as you seem to spend most your time waiting for them to appear. And they do just appear. There seems to be no distance in this game until they're light close. Anyway, it's crap. Fifth 
Cisco Heat is in third position. Okay, so if Cisco Heat is in third place, then you know that the next two are going to be really bad. This game is notoriously bad on the home systems, and I'd say that the C64 version is the worst of the lot. To be honest, I didn't like the arcades, so it was never a game that I thought I've got to have it, but loads of people will have paid top dollar for this, and it was one of the more pricey ones at $10.99 to $15.99. I mean, I would have been really wounded if I had bought this game back in the day. In second place we have Highlander. There can be only one, and this one just missed out on being number one. Not because it's any better than the next game, because they are equally crap, but because this is actually the cheapest game on the list, on tape at just 8 95 But that's still around 33 quid in today's money, and it's rubbish, like really rubbish. Many people say that this is the worst C64 commercial game ever released, but it does have the Martin Galway It's a Kind of Magic rendition, which although doesn't save it, takes the sting out of being ripped off slightly. And now, in first place, is the creme de la crap known as Dick Tracy. Again, not one that I would have rushed out and bought, as I didn't like the film. The game role makes the movie look like an Oscar winner. Oh, maybe we should mention that after what Warren did. I, I want... Warren, what did you do? The only mistake bigger than Beatty's would have been to anyone who forked out 11 to 16 pounds for this manure. When I was getting the footage for this video, I was like, what is the actual point of this game? It's utter shite, and Titus should have been handing out compensation to people who paid for this. Okay, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what games you remember buying full price and being totally unimpressed by. Please remember to drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Oh, and if you would like to become a Patreon like these guys going up the screen right now, get on over to my Patreon channel, where you can pledge for as little as $1 that will get you perks like your name in the end credits, video requests, giveaways and more in the future. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out.